but for now <laughs> I'm going to continue with this course. I can't guarantee that I will complete the course. If the other plan works out for me, I'm out. I'm going to email them that I'm withdrawing from the course. For this first semester, we've got about a good 17 assessments that we have to complete. So just because you did the access course to medicine, does not necessarily mean that you will get accepted to medical school. Problem in the feeling. Make it Friday, enjoy it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me once again back onto my channel. My name is Belinda and if you've not already subscribed, please don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as turn on your notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload. So today guys, I'm going to be talking about the long awaited video that some of you wanted to see of course. So some of you may know that I recently started the access course to medicine, well recently started the access course to medicine in September straight after I completed my nursing degree so I literally completed my nursing degree on the 10th of September and on the 13th of September I started the access course to medicine so literally no break in between but nonetheless we keep moving we keep surviving so in this video I just thought I'm going to do a bit of an update in regards to what the course entails what the course is about what sort of assignments we got and um, also the modules that we're doing because I do remember that some of you have been asking me Belinda what are the modules that you were doing when you did the access course the very first time and obviously at that point in time when I did the access course to nursing video I wasn't doing YouTube so there was not much module content that I could discuss because by that time it's gone out the window literally forgot but this time around I know of all the modules and I really want to bring you guys some sort of an idea what the access course is about the intensity of the access course because I think it's very important to know how intense is the course and yeah just discuss everything about the access course and what I've been up to up to this point in time also I'm gonna have different videos out in regards to some assignments obviously not all the assignments because there's quite a lot of assignments but I am gonna be showing you guys a couple of the assignments that they have been giving us um, you know which consists of workbook essays etc etc so I'm gonna do some of those as well on this channel basically you know just for you guys to get some sort of an idea for those who are interested in taking on the access course to medicine so I'm gonna also take you guys along with me in regards to that aspect so that's what i want to discuss in this video so if you are interested guys please keep on watching so first things first i do want to say that the access course to medicine is not easy at all okay and this is not to scare anybody off but this is just me giving you guys the way it is you know what i'm saying for some of you you may know that i haven't come on youtube for quite some time and reason being specifically because of this course okay there is no time for it so Needless to say, I underestimated the access course a bit. And I think the reason I underestimated the intensity of the access course is mainly because I've done an access course to nursing as well as a whole nursing degree. Now, I wasn't expecting it to be easy, of course. However, I didn't think that it was going to be as intense as it is at this point in time, okay? The access course to medicine is more intense in the actual access course to nursing and the whole of nursing degree combined together that's how intense that course is and for this specific reason they would advise you not to work and study at the same time I mean like I get some people they are able to do that okay however for me as some of you may know if you've not already watched my other video I've recently obviously qualified as a registered nurse applied for my NNC pin and finally got my nursing pin which means that I can start working now but unfortunately I find myself not being able to work with the access course to medicine I don't have any plans in working anytime soon because obviously this course is very very intense and I think I've told you guys, when I did the actual course in nursing, I was working full-time. When I did the nursing degree, I was working part-time. Even during the holiday period, I don't intend to work either because I've got quite a number of assessments that I will have to complete during that period as well. I'm not saying it's not possible. If you get to work, that's all good and well, but somewhere, somewhere along the line, you have to find a balance, you know? And for me personally, I haven't been able to find that balance as yet, both working and studying. So, Further on guys, I do want to talk to you guys about, you know, obviously the timetable as well as modules, as well as the level of expectation. So firstly, I want to discuss the timetable. Once again, guys, I do want to put a disclaimer out there. It varies obviously from the college that you are going to or that you will be applying, timetables change. So for instance, with us, um, our timetable consists of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So from Monday and Tuesday, we start classes at nine o'clock and we don't finish until 
6.45, so quarter to five. And then on Wednesday, we get to start class a bit late, um, later rather, around 10 past one. And then we finish around half past four. But then afterwards, because I'm doing GCSE English, I have to go to another campus at six o'clock and do that from six till nine. So obviously the reason I'm doing a GCSE English on the side is that we're prior to applying to the course, my previous GCSE English, okay, um, I got a C, so I need to get a B because most medical schools requirements for GCSE English is a B. Now, with the access course to medicine, you are allowed to take on one GCSE. So if you have to take on GCSE English and GCSE Mathematics, you can't take them both on at the same time. You can only take on one at a time. So that's my timetable. So you might think, oh, you know what? It's not that hard. It runs basically three days a week. So that means Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I am off. But actually I am not off. The reason I say that is because on the days that you're actually off, you are busy doing various assessments that they have given you that is due the following week so with the access course to medicine there is something due every single week that's the intensity of the course so if we're not having for example an exam then we're having lab work if it's not lab work that we're having there is quite a number of other things that are going on like workbook assignments lab reports okay, so we've got our BMAT exam that we have to study for. We've got our UCAS application that we have to complete. We've got to complete our medical school personal statement as well. So we got to do quite a lot of things. And then afterwards there comes also other exams on top of that exam and another assignment. So it's basically overlapping each other. If I haven't shown you guys how our first semester assignment looks like, I'm gonna see if I can find a, actually I'm gonna show you guys what our first assignment. And this is just basically guys, this is just, for biology as well as um, chemistry. I haven't started my planner for physics as well as mathematics yet. So if you guys can see this, this is literally all the assignments that we have. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And guys, this is just biology and chemistry. I still need to create one for physics as well. For this first semester, we've got about a good 16, 17 assessments that we have to complete within the first semester. So you guys can see how intense that is. And if I tell you guys personally, I am worn out, I am worn out. <laughs> I'm laughing about it but it's not a joke because I am tired you know so if you're gonna take on this course I would advise you guys to be prepared you know physically mentally and financially be prepared okay so moving on to modules guys because some of you are really really interested in knowing what modules we will be doing for the whole of the academic year and the college has provided us already with the list of modules that we will be doing so i'm going to try and insert a screenshot over here and um, for you guys to have a look what modules we will be discussing so these are the access to medicine modules so basically there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 modules that we are going to be doing for the whole of the academic year. So you might think, wow, that's not bad. I also thought, oh, 19 modules for the whole year, that's good. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So one module may consist of three assessments, okay? Okay, so I'm going to try and insert a module guideline um, from one of our assignments, if I can find it. And then I want to show you guys how it looks like so for example like i said one module can consist of three assessments so it could be an exam um combined with an essay combined with a report just for one specific model so like if you see these modules on the screen don't think that okay it's just these 19 modules the way i worked it out in my head is i basically calculated 19 times 3 all right so 19 times 3 comes up to 57 assessments overall over the duration of the course it might sound crazy you need to be prepared for that okay because it's not easy it is hard okay so obviously next i'm going to talk to you guys on how you are marked in regards to your assignment because i think it's very very important to know how you will be marked because depending on how you will be marked would be the breaking 
or the making of whether you will get accepted into medical school or not. So just because you did the access course to medicine does not necessarily mean that you will get accepted to medical school if you've not met the entry requirements for those various modules or for the various universities that you are applying for. So that is very very important to take into consideration. So for the access course to medicine most medical schools require you to obtain distinctions for your modules. So you need to get a certain amount of distinction. Most medical schools require you to have 45 credits at distinctions. I do know that there is some that actually say that you can have 36 credit at distinctions and the rest you can have it at merit or pass. So obviously it all depends on the uh, medical school that you're applying to. So you will have to do a bit of adequate research in regards to the entry requirements. Okay, so the way it works is if you've done an access course before you will know what I'm talking about. So you obviously you get your pass, merit and distinction and fail obviously. If you are given a module and within that module you are given three assessments so for example if you get a merit for one assessment another merit for another assessment and then a distinction for another assessment overall for that module you got a merit if that makes any sense now if you got a merit for one assessment got a distinction for another one for another assessment and a distinction for another assessment that means that overall that module you have obtained a distinction so in order to understand it it does not necessarily mean that you must get distinctions for all your assignments however majority of your assignments you will need to get a distinction so for example with me as well i wasn't too sure how it worked and then when i found out how it worked i was like okay you know that 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 sounds a bit better because i'm not too sure if i could get a distinction for every single assignment you know so it is better to fail an assignment because that will give you an opportunity to resubmit your assignment and aim for a distinction if you submit an assignment and it's on merit level guys they will keep you at merit um that's the rules i don't know if that applies to all colleges but specifically for the one that i'm going to that's what they say you have to aim for a distinction in a way that's good but then in a way it's not good because that gives you extra pressure to perform and aim for distinction level so that if you don't make it the lowest you fall is a merit so obviously we also have an ungraded model. So some of you who know that the access course is normally made up of 60 credits. So 45 is graded and then 15 is ungraded. So 15, the ungraded would be the study skills. So the study skills could consist of anything. I mean, like for example, now in the study skills, we are doing about the Cornell note taking. So that's false part of the study skill. One of our essays that was supposed to be graded, they decided to change it to be ungraded. The reason they wanted it to be ungraded is just for us to get some sort of an idea how to write an essay and to know whether we are doing it the way they expect us to write it. And thereafter, we can get a bit of feedback from the teacher because we are allowed to show her a certain amount of our work. So obviously it varies from college to college. Each college has different rules and regulations, okay? So what I do wanna say is if you do not meet the minimum requirements for medical schools because you didn't do so well on your access course to medicine that certificate is useless that means that basically you've gone to school for a whole nine months for nothing waste of energy waste of time because you can't use the access course to medicine certificate because you did not get the required mark so it's very very important to be aware that if you're going to apply for this access course to medicine you need to work your but off. Um, the access course to medicine is not like the access course to nursing. The access course to nursing, even if you get a pass, some universities will still accept you. It depends on what universities for nursing you will be applying to. But obviously, doing the access course to nursing, you get a greater chance rather to be accepted onto the nursing course. Whereas the access course to medicine, unfortunately, is not the case. You know what I'm saying? So it's really important to know what you're getting yourself into. From my personal experience, even sometimes I ask myself, what am I still doing on the course? But um, for now, while I'm waiting for... <laughs> While I'm waiting for my other plan to work out, guys, you know me and plans. I'm always working with something behind the scenes. And then if that doesn't work out for myself, then obviously I will see this course to the end. But if the other plan works out for me, I'm going to email them that I'm withdrawing from the course. And um, I'm going to follow my plan A. So fingers crossed. I'm going to continue with this course. I can't guarantee that I will complete the course. But 
<laughs> I'm going to do the best that I can, honestly, because there's other things that are worth more than this course. So I just thought that I should come on here, guys, to give you some sort of an update in regards to how I'm finding it. And also, I just thought I should do this video for anybody who is looking into applying for the access course to medicine because there's not much information out there or people speaking specifically on their own experience. I know that you can join some student forums and they discuss about their experience overall, but I mean, like overall on YouTube, I think there's only a couple of people who talk about the access course to medicine so I just thought this would be an interesting video you know or series to make on this channel you know just for you guys to get some sort of an idea for those who are interested in taking this route to get into medical school um yeah anyway guys this brings me to the end of my video any future videos that you guys would like me to do please don't forget to suggest that down below so yes guys I hope you like this video please don't forget to comment like and subscribe and I will hopefully 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 see you guys in my next video bye